All right. So uh, this is the review for the whole course. Um, we'll start with chapter one, and uh, hopefully we get uh, as many chapters in there as possible. I don't think we'll be able to get the whole thing in, but we'll do a couple of videos for this. Okay, so we will start with chapter one. Um, and chapter one, of course, was the basis of the whole course, right? Remember, I told you that at the beginning of the semester, that whatever you do in chapter one, you're going to do it for literally the rest of the semester. And we ended up doing it a lot, which was vector components over and over and over again. Okay, uh, so the most important thing that you need to remember from chapter one, of course, are your five uh, uniform, uh, uniform acceleration equations. Okay, number one, that's the first thing that uh, we looked at. Okay, and this is chapter one. And the next thing that you need to remember from here, of course, was uh, we did frames of reference. Reference and, of course, vector components. Vector components, which was the key thing that uh, we learned in this chapter. Now, do you want me to do example? Well, I'm not going to do examples. I'm just going to maybe review how to do vector components and then uh, very quickly uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So frames of reference, of course, we do ve vector components in there uh, and uh, just a very straightforward way of looking at vector components. Um, <clears throat> what we did was uh, we took a look at, for example, we said if you have dx and dy okay and the the reason why we do vector components is because you have objects that are not moving in straight up and down motion uh, or sideways motion we have objects that are uh, moving in other particular directions okay so example if you had this d1 right here and this was let's say 30 degrees from the horizon and this is 20 degrees from the horizon that would be d1x d1y d2x and d2y and basically what the vector component method uh, gave us the ability to solve a problem without using cosine law okay so if we were able to do this we were able to solve it then you ended up with a dx which was d1x plus d2x okay and in this situation for example d1x is going to be uh, cos of 30 times uh, d1 Okay, going in, in this situation is going in the direction of east. And then d2x would have been cos of 20 times d2. And that's also going in an easterly direction. Now remember what we said was the direction was very, very important. And the reason they were important is because um, if you had east and west, then you would have subtracted the two vectors. Uh, but because both of them are going in the easterly direction, here you would have added the vector and your final vector would have been going in the easterly direction, for example. Okay. Um, and then we did the same thing for your dy. You would have said d1y plus d2y. And in this situation, this would have been sine of 30 times d1. And that is going uh, north plus, and this was going to be sine of 20 times d2. And that is going south. And of course, because they're both going in the opposite direction, we would have subtracted the two together. And then you would have got a dy component. Depending on which of the two directions was larger, your direction would have been either north or south, depending on which of the two was, was larger. After you ended up with your d1x and d1y, the next thing that we did uh, was uh, we... Uh, of course, then use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what my D resultant was. And that would have been, which was DX squared plus DY squared. And how did we do this? Well, we just did C squared equals to A squared plus B squared. Okay, because all we've done is we've added the two D1s, uh, D1Xs, added the two D1Ys, and you come up with another triangle. And once you got your DR, uh, of course, your uh, question was not done. Then you had to find up uh, the final direction. And so imagine if you had dx going this way and dy going this way. Okay. And then you had this theta right here. Okay. And you would have figured out the direction using tan inverse uh, dy over dx in this situation. And then a particular direction, theta. Okay. 
Now we will do sample problems from each chapter. Right now I'm just going to go over the main theories. Okay, so I won't do any examples or anything. Uh, we'll just go over the theories. So this was uh, the main, I guess, the basis of chapter one, vector components. If you understood vector components in chapter one, we did it for everything. We did it for projectile motion. We did it for relative motion. We did it for frames of reference. Now remember, projectile motion is not on the final exam. Is not on the final exam. So you need to skip over that. Okay? All right. Any questions, concerns from chapter one? This was pretty straightforward, right? You should have all got 100, 100% 100 in chapter one test. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, huh? Too late now. Okay. Okay. Anyways, so let's do frames of reference very quickly. Now, frames of reference or relative motion. And the way that we did it was, again, we're using vector components to solve for the question. And what we did was we said if you had an object traveling in different frames of reference, so for example, a boat in water or a plane in the air, Okay, then we are trying to find out the velocities of the boat in the water in relation to water as well as to ground. Okay, and same thing here in terms of air and to ground. Okay, so for example, if I had a boat and you had a river, okay, and your boat was going this way, for example, okay, well, let's use a plane. I think a plane would be better than the boat. Okay, so if you had a plane, for example, and the plane was traveling this way, and then you had an airspeed, and the airspeed was pushing the plane this way, so what you would have said was this was the VPA, so this was plane's velocity relative to air, okay, and then you had this one, which was VAG, which was the velocity of the wind or the air, so the velocity of the air relative to the ground okay and the way to solve the question was exactly how we did vector components so you would have done this plus this and you would have done this plus this which was tip to tail vectors always adding tip to tail and then you would have ended up with a vpgx which is the planes velocity relative to ground Okay, and then you would have said VPG, which equals to um, VPAX plus VAGX. Okay, and then this was your VPGX, and VPGY would have been VPAY plus VAGY. And then you would have done the Pythagorean theorem, VPG, which would have been the square root of vpgx squared plus vpgy squared and then you would have done theta and find the directions so again exactly the same format as the, that we did with vector components the only difference being that you've got different variables okay we did this for chapter one are we okay with this okay eight minutes for chapter one great all right Let's continue. Go to chapter two. Now, chapter two, of course, is Newton's laws, right? And we're talking about forces. That's the most important thing that we focused on. So, of course, FBDs, <clears throat> free body diagrams. Okay. Uh, here, all the forces that we talked about, so Newton's first, second, third law. Okay, we talked about friction. Okay, and then the last thing that we talked about uh, was inertial and non-inertial frames of reference. So inertial and non-inertial frames of reference. Okay, now the questions that we did 
for all of these um, were interesting because we did questions that required a pulley that had an angle and so on and so forth so imagine you had something like this and I'm just giving you one of the harder ones okay and imagine you had an object here and another object here and they were connected by a pulley like so okay now imagine you have Newton's first second third law as well as friction all included in here okay and the way you got a question you had something like this let's say this was 25 degrees let's say this was 35 degrees let's say this was mass 1 which was 5 kilograms and this was mass 2 which was 15 kilograms right and the way we did it was um, you would have got first the FBD and the FBD was crucial without the FBD your whole system was incorrect and what we learned in chapter 2 was you had to come up with a system of equations if your system of equation was wrong it didn't matter what you did your whole question is going to be wrong so you had to understand which of these two masses is causing my motion so in this situation what do you think where what is causing your motion m2 or m1 m2 m2 is larger and the angle is larger the larger the angle the steeper the angle of course more gravity is affecting it okay so you would have done f1 i mean this was your fn this would have been your fg this would have been your fgx or fgy and this was your fgx now when i marked your tests and your quizzes people didn't know how to draw this so remember your fgx is always parallel to your ground okay now imagine if i gave you the question where i give you a mu k of 0 0.5 both sides so now what you had was if this object is moving upward like this I have tension that is pulling it upward and then I have FK so this is FK1 that's pulling it backward okay now in this situation again you would do, you would have done the same thing you would have put up FN FG FGY and FGX and then you would have had this object is moving downward this way so you would have had two FT going upward and FK2 uh, going upward so far so good okay and then what we did was um, you would have come up with a system of equation and your system of equations would have included all of this so in this situation for example you would have come up with well this mass second mass is causing my motion so you would have said fg 2x minus ft minus fk2 okay uh which equals to mass one times acceleration or mass two times acceleration i should say and the second one would have been ft which is pulling it upward minus fgx1 minus fk1 which equals to mass 1 times acceleration and then you would have said that this FT and FT cancel out and you come up with a general equation FGX2 minus FK2 minus FG1X minus FK1 which equals to mass 1 times acceleration plus mass 2 times acceleration you remember this yeah you better okay and then of course you FGX is gonna be MG biggest mistakes people make mg sine theta people forget the g i don't know why okay minus fk would have been mu k times fn which is mg cos theta minus uh, mg sine theta minus uh, mu k mg cos theta and this was cos theta 1 cos theta 2 and then you would have divided by m1 plus m2 which would have given you an acceleration and this is how you would have solved it this was what we did final equations would have been something like this this is what you're going to be expected on the exam i'm pretty i'm telling you right now okay all right uh and the last thing that we did was inertial and non-inertial frames of reference and in inertial and non-inertial frames of reference we will talk about them a little more in chapter three so i will uh since we don't have time i'll leave it for chapter three cool